Chapter 4 Season 2 just came out, and in this video, we're going to go over everything you need to know in order to be successful and competitive this season. Let's first start off with the tournaments that we have in Season 2. Starting off on Fridays, we have the Opens of the Duos Cash Cup. It seems like we're heading back to the old Duo Cash Cup formats with Opens on Fridays, and then most likely it'll be the top 50 teams from the Opens on Fridays will then move on to a Finals on Saturday. Moving on to Sunday, we have the Solo Victory Cash Cup that we had last season, and we also have the new No Build Trio Victory Cash Cup, which will be easy opportunities to make some earnings. But you might be thinking, how do I qualify for FNCS if there's no Divisional Cup? Well, the answer is that FNCS is much more open this season with there only being a champions division requirement. FNCS will be played on Thursday and Friday and your points will be added from both those days in order to form a cumulative leaderboard where the top 50 teams will qualify for a weekly final. All right, now that we've covered the tournaments, let's move on to probably the largest change and that is the zones. Instead of the old nine zones, there are now 12 zones and the game has increased slightly in time from 24 minutes and five seconds to 25 minutes and 20 seconds. These zones are still very new and I'm sure that a ton more strategies will be found to play these zones, but there are two main things that I really want to highlight that will definitely be useful. The first is that the zone is a one tick zone for much longer than it was in previous zones, with the first four zones being one tick and zones five and six being only two ticks. This means that you can play in the zone for much more time in the mid game without having to worry about being caught in a five tick zone that will basically instantly eliminate you. The zone is one thing that can eliminate you when you're making zone plays, but another risk is getting held when you get in. You can counter this by doing what Cammy and Seti did in the Invitational by throwing a shield bubble onto boats and then using this to get yourself into the zone without getting shot at. The second zone tip is that because these moving zones are much shorter, we will definitely be seeing a lot more games going to heal off. This means getting good heals to go into heal off is now a major win condition and needs to be played for. If you are in a later moving zone and you don't have good options, it might be worth to start looking for some place to potentially find heal off so that you can win the game. All right, now let's move on to the new augments that have been added in season two, and there are seven of them, and I'm going to rank them from worst to best. In seventh, I have Dignified Finish. This refreshes your kinetic blade charges whenever you get an elimination. Although this could be occasionally useful, I doubt that we'll see many players actually using this because the kinetic blade charge time is very short at only 10 seconds per charge, and with the moving zones being much shorter and slower, it is unlikely that your katana will even need the charges when you get an elimination. Next up in sixth, I have the Treasure Hunter. Treasure Hunter marks any unopened chest whenever you enter a new POI. In low elo, this might be more useful, but in high quality games, basically every chest is going to be looted, so most of the time this augment is just going to be a waste. In fifth, I have the shotgun recycle perk. This perk is decent, as it will sometimes not use a shotgun shot when you shoot. This could be occasionally useful in pushing the tempo of fights if you are using either a combat or maven shotgun, as those guns use shells much faster than the habit. In fourth, I have the slap surplus. This gives you a slap juice out of every single chest you open. This basically means that you can use no heals if you get this off spawn, and it will be nice to have in the mid game because if you get tagged up, then you can quickly heal yourself back up with all the slap juice. In third, I have the dumpster diving. I might be a little biased on this one because as a frenzy player, there are a ton of hay bales and dumpsters that I will definitely be using this on. But if you are really aware of the map, the dumpster diver augment will be really useful as you can jump in and out of a dumpster and get a ton more heals for the end game. In second, I have the medio ammo amp. This augment is really strong as it buffs the clip size of your ARs dramatically. This means that you can spray way more and put way more pressure onto your opponents. Finally, in first, I have the munition slide augment. This augment gives you medium ammo just for sliding. This means that if you slide in your box, you can basically get max medium ammo very quickly. This can be incredibly useful in surge lobbies as you won't have to worry about saving AR ammo and it will speed up the time you need to spend looting drastically. All right, next let's talk about loadouts. For your AR, if you're playing in a surge game, then you should definitely be using the red eye as it is the best surge weapon and it is usable as a secondary in the box. If you're not in a surge game, then it is honestly better just to use the twin mag SMG as its pullout time and spraying capabilities just outshine every other secondary. For shotguns, you should definitely be using the havoc if you can get it. Between the maven and combat, I'm still a little split because the combat is so strong if you can get into the box with it, but it is very weak when you're trying to play defensive with the combat shotgun. After your shotgun and AR, you should try to carry two healing items and the most important item of all, the kinetic blade. The kinetic blade is extremely important to be carrying as it's the only form of mobility this season. The kinetic blade has three charges that can be used to propel yourself forward through the end game. Each charge then takes 10 seconds to recharge before you can use it again. Using the first charge, the kinetic blade puts you a lot in the open though, as you have to stand still in order to use it and you can't just fly through builds like you could with the hammer. There's a really good method to protect yourself though. What you want to do is make a top row edit. Then you want to hug up against the wall, and as you are charging up the kinetic blade, you want to aim out the open space, and you will fly out of your box while keeping yourself completely safe. Hopefully this video helped you feel more prepared for Chapter 4 Season 2, and if you enjoy this video, I think you might enjoy the video on screen. Peace.